In today's video we're going to look at the type of yarns that I use for tapestry weaving. Hello lovely friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, a lot of people have asked me about the type of yarns that I use for tapestry weaving, so I thought I'd do a separate video. I have answered this question in studio vlogs in the past, but then I get people asking the questions again, and then I've got to find the studio vlogs that relate to the answer, and it's just getting a bit out of control. So I think what I'm going to do is a little series called Tapestry Tips. So if you have any particular tapestry tips that you want me to cover, then please leave a comment down below and I can address them. Now, I'm not a tapestry teacher. If you want to learn handwoven tapestry from scratch, I really suggest that you check out Rebecca Mezov and her details will be in the description box below. She is awesome and she's a great tapestry teacher. If I was learning now, I'd go through Rebecca. So head over there. But the sort of tapestry tips that I'm interested in giving you are the type of things that I wanted to know when I was learning tapestry and there wasn't much information around and there still isn't much information around. So Rebecca did do a blog post on finding yarn for tapestry and I will also link that in the description. But today I'm going to talk about the types of yarns that I use for tapestry and also trying to figure out how many yarn strands to use depending on the EPI that you are weaving with. But before we get started, I would so love if you could subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up because the more people who subscribe and the more people who click that like button, the more people can see the videos. And I just wanna help as many people as possible because tapestry is a hella complicated medium, let me tell you. It is. <laughs> So what I'm going to tell you in today's video is completely subjective and it's my own personal opinion. So that's my disclaimer, just in case I say something and you pounce on me. I know there are a lot of people out there who use knitting yarn for tapestry weaving. I am not one of them, just saying. So if you're watching this video and you think that I am a snob for not liking knitting yarn, I have seen that phrase around the tapestry community, believe me, um, then in that case I'm going to say yes I am a snob. Because you know why? I want my tapestries to hold together for generations. I am not selling a tapestry that's going to fall apart. That's just it. I want people to buy my work knowing that that's going to be part of their family that they can hand down. It is made for life if not more than one life. <laughs> so you've heard me talk before about structural integrity and that's what I'm looking for with my tapestries. So if you don't mind your tapestry being quite floppy and not really holding together very well, then you can use whatever the hell you like to weave your tapestries. But I'm going to give you some tips that what I use to make sure that my tapestries have a particular texture and they hold together so that they will last for many, many, many years to come. Now, when I say structural integrity, what I mean is, and I'm gonna hold up one of my tapestries, it's really hard to show you on video, but my tapestries are actually quite stiff. So yes, they're a textile and they do flop about if I do this, but the actual texture is quite firm. So the reason that my tapestry texture is quite firm and stiff is because of the yarns that I use. So let me put that down. What I try and do is I try and use a mixture of yarns to give a few different textures as well as um, give stiffness to the actual hand woven fabric. And the way that I give stiffness is by using linen. Now, I, I'm not a good YouTuber, let's do this. Let's see if, here we go. So I'll put the brands that I use down below as well, but this is a, I think it's a 16 slash two linen, and I use one piece of linen in every strand, uh, I use a butterfly, so in every butterfly, there's one strand of linen, as, as best I can. Sometimes I can't find a color match, or I just don't happen to have a color match. So what I do is I try and use wool that is not too soft, so that it still gives that stiff texture. So on my usual butterfly bundle, I will mix linen 
and I will use wool and again let's see if the camera here we go so this is the wool I'm using at the moment um, in my last studio vlog I talked about trying to find a different wool because this one is from the UK and if you're in the UK I would highly recommend Weaver's Bazaar Worsted Yarn Medium One Weight. It's brilliant, but it's way too expensive for me in Australia. Like the postage is more than the actual yarn. And this cone, I mean, this is, this is getting low on the cone, but when it was a full cone, it was only about 300 grams and it was about $120, which is ridiculous. So uh, the one I'm using next is this one that you um, also saw me um, winding into a ball in the last studio vlog and the camera going to pick that up come on camera I'm gonna make you work hard today <laughs> so this one is um, spinny and I will put the brand on the screen as well because I can't remember off the top of my head but um, this one I got from Sunspun and this is about 50 gram ball and uh, I'm also putting some footage in from the studio vlog I put it over my warping mill and then I wound it into a ball. So totally old school. I don't have a swift or a ball winder. And to be honest, I don't think I'd be doing this often enough to invest in that equipment. Uh, I am quite a minimalist. I don't like to buy equipment unless I really need it. So we're gonna go with that for the moment. The other yarn that I like to buy is from the Australian Tapestry Workshop. Now, this is it here. Okay, so it is incredibly fine. And it's very different from what it used to be years ago when I first started tapestry. It's really, really fine now. It says that it's two slash 13 wool. So it's really fine. What I do like about it now more than in the past, they used to do quite a soft spongy wool. And I actually used to use it for cross stitch because it was great for cross stitch, but for tapestry, it was still a little bit spongy. Now this is so fine that for my normal, say 10 EPI, I need to use quite a lot of strands um, of this wool. I probably use about five or six strands. So I don't use, I try to avoid using this by itself. So in a butterfly, so I'll use my black as an example because that's all my backgrounds are in the black. I use two strands of this wool. I use one strand of the Australian Tapestry Workshop wool, and then I use one strand of linen. Now, this is just my personal recipe. What you need to do is experiment. And I know that's super annoying to hear, but you will have your own way of doing things. You will have your own preferences, and only you can come up with your particular recipe. And as I said in the beginning of the video, there are plenty of people who use knitting yarn, and you know what? Give it a try. If you like it, then go for it. It's a very, very cheap way of finding yarn. Also, if you're vegan, you might want to try acrylic or a plant-based fibers. But personally, even though I avoid wool for weaving scarves, at the moment, I'm still using wool in my tapestries until I can find a vegan option. So if you have any options for this kind of wool, um, you know, for, you know, plant-based, <laughs> then please let me know. The other thing to take into account is, are you interested in dyeing your own wool or would you prefer to buy them pre-dyed? Now I am in the latter camp. I'm way too lazy to dye my own <laughs> wool. Uh, when I did my tapestry diploma, I did a whole subject on dyeing and I did not enjoy it. Sorry to say, I just wasn't my thing. I just want to get into doing the weaving. I'm just, you know, I'm, I don't prepare very much for my weaving. I just like to get right in there and weave. So if you do like doing dyeing, like I know Rebecca Mezov, we mentioned earlier, I know she does a lot of her own dyeing, then you've got way more freedom in what kind of yarn you can use. Because if you go to most yarn shops, they have a huge amount of fibers and they are just natural colored and you can dye them whatever you like. Now, the place that I get a lot of my yarn from is Thread Collective in Brisbane, Queensland. And uh, this is not sponsored, unfortunately. I buy pretty much everything from there. So um, I wish they did sponsor me, but I will put the link in the description and you will find in there so many different types of yarn. They've even got peppermint yarn and 
lavender yarn and all sorts, rose yarn I think. So you can experiment with all different types of fibres if you want to dye your own. But for me personally, I buy them pre-dyed and the ones that I've got in front of me are pretty much all of my my grey scale and blacks because that's the bulk of what I use. Now I must confess, I do have a lot of wool and let me show you my secret shame. <laughs> it is a whole tub full of coloured yarn. Most of it is from the Australian Tapestry Workshop, as you can see. Um, some of it is left over from butterflies that I've used in the past. But yeah, there's a lot. The reason I have a lot is a couple of reasons, actually. Number one is I used to use a lot of this yarn for cross stitch. Um, and number two, it is good having a nice stash of different colours because even though I tend to work in monochromatic colours, I do use some colour. So this pink you can see here was in the text um, of my last tapestry. So I do need some colours, uh, but a whole tub full? Hmm, I might need to weed some of those out. <laughs> now you can use unconventional threads in tapestry, like in my last one, and even the one I'm doing at the moment, I've been using this metallic thread. You can do that, but the tip I have for using unconventional threads is make sure that area around the tapestry, so around those unconventional threads, have the more traditional, stiffer weft bundle in there. So I'll show you what I mean with this one. So I used the metallic threads in my uh, tapestry of the mammogram. Um, the other thing I did use is unconventional materials. I use x-ray film, but that's that's even more complicated. I'm not going into that. Uh, but for using things like metallic thread, can you see that around the metallic thread, I've made sure that there are more traditional yarns being used. And that just makes sure that everything is held together in place and that the uh, the back of the tapestry is all secure as well because those metallic threads are a little bit slippery and I was a bit worried that they would um, you know come undone and they haven't because I think I've beaten everything down so tightly which is one way of doing it but also I've got around those areas I've also got the more traditional wool so that's holding everything in place as well so feel free to experiment with more unconventional threads because it is fun to do that and to give different texture. I mean, there are so many interesting acrylic yarns that you could use, um, you know, those kind of fluffy yarns, but I probably wouldn't make the whole tapestry in those types of threads. I'd probably intersperse them with other more traditional threads just to make sure that you've got the whole integrity of the piece and that the work holds together for many, many years. Whatever you do, try and think about the longevity of your piece. Tapestry is very, very different from those weavings, as they call them, those wall hangings. Those wall hangings are not going to be lasting for very many years at all because they're so loosely woven. Usually they use very bad quality um, wool or fiber. And so they're not gonna be lasting very long at all. Um, so tapestry is very, very different. Tapestry is way more difficult to learn and takes a lot longer to do than the wall hangings. So bear that in mind when you choose your materials because you don't want to spend 70, 80 hours doing a tapestry and then it ends up falling apart because you've chosen, you know, a, a really, really cheap fibre. You need to really think very much about how you're going to hold your work together. If you do want to use knitting yarn that's quite spongy, then try and think of other ways to make your tapestry more um, structured. Yeah, so you could be using things like maybe one piece of linen to every piece of your spongy knitting yarn. I don't know, I've never done that, but it might be worth doing some samplers, playing around with your materials and seeing if there's a way that you can make sure that your piece is going to last for many, many, many years. So how do you know how many strands to use depending on what EPI that you are weaving with? Okay, this might be a bit tricky to explain, but I'll give it my best shot. So basically, can you see you've got the warp threads here? When you put a bundle of yarn together, 
let's see if it fits nicely between two warp threads. If it does, give it a try, see if it works. If you are getting too many, I'm going to say lice, so if I say lice, if I don't beat it down enough, can you see, you can see white warp, that's called lice. <laughs> It totally is. Uh, but if you are beating it down and it's beating down nicely, then you've probably got the correct balance of threads in there. So with this particular one, I have four, but they're not just the same. So I have two thicker wool yarn, one Australian Tapestry Workshop yarn, which is very thin, and one strand of linen. That makes sure that this is very stiff so my texture is very stiff. Some tapestry artists like theirs to be softer, in which case they may use all of the Australian Tapestry Workshop yarn or a similar type of yarn. But because the Australian Tapestry Workshop yarn is thinner, you'd have to use more of them to be able to fit between two warps. Now, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, <laughs> but basically you will come up with your own recipe of how you do it. So I've got a different one here, the white. So that one is five, let's have a look, four strands, sorry, four strands of Australian Tapestry Workshop yarn and one strand of linen. So what I've done is I have just made sure that they fit between two warps. And if it's feeling like it's too thin or too thick, then I can make the alteration later. But you will find as a tapestry weaver that you will just have your own preferences and your own recipe of how you mix the yarns. So pretty much looking at, oh, let me just move my tripod. So looking at all of my yarns that I'm using here, pretty much everything has linen except for this colour in here. This is all Australian Tapestry Workshop yarn. And I've got five strands in there, two of one colour, three of the other. No, I actually just have four, two of one and two of the other. And it does give a much spongier texture. Uh, that's fine because I don't use a lot of that colour. And all the grey that I've got going around it all has linen in it. So it still gives it that stiff texture. So again, it's whatever you like. So the tapestry yarns that I'm using all the time, I keep in this IKEA trolley. And I'm sure that you probably have one of these at home. But in the second drawer, I keep the yarns that I'm using all the time. So usually they're the blacks and the greys that I use. And then in the bottom drawer, I've got some of my spare yarns that I've bought for when the other ones have been used. Um, if you're wondering what's in the top one, that's usually where my laptop goes. <laughs> if I'm watching something while I'm weaving. So these trolleys are amazing. I mean. Comment below if you've got one because oh, best invention ever. Thank you so much for watching this video if you made it to the end. I hope it wasn't too waffly. Look, I'm really not a natural teacher at all. I just, I'm just talking off the cuff of my experience of tapestry wool. So I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you did. And as I said in the beginning of the video, also please let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you would like me to cover in these tapestry tips. Um, so what I've got sort of in my head is finishing off tapestries because when I was learning, and even up to a few years ago, there's really nothing around about how to finish off your tapestries. I use a batten on the back to hang them, so I will show you how I do that. And I'm also thinking about keeping the edges straight because that's another one that I had so many problems with when I was learning and there really wasn't much information out there. And even now, you can find dribs and drabs, but I'm going to do a whole video on it so that you can refer back to it later if you want to. So thank you again for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.